If you go online and look for the meaning of the word crux, you will come to know that it is the decisive and the most important point of an issue. Crux is the essence of a discussion. It is the focal point of any view or argument on any subject. Very often, people waste a lot of time in getting into debates, discussions or arguments without understanding the crux of the issue. Interestingly enough, the original Latin of the meaning crux refers to the cross. The certainty of the cross should not be taken away. Most modern day preachers don't tend to talk about it often, but we must all be aware that Christianity is absolutely nothing without the cross. Over the years, etymologically speaking, crux also refers to the central point. Another most common term which we use is crucial, which is also central, essential, and the focal point of any subject matter. Crucial is just as important as the word cruz, or otherwise the cross. In the first letter to the Corinthians, Paul states and tries to state the importance of Jesus' death on the cross where his skin was torn and where his blood was shed so that salvation was brought to all of mankind. It will be foolish of us if we do not believe in it. But once we understand why Jesus has submitted himself, we will understand that the crux of the issue. And we will understand how crucial it is that we focus on Jesus' death on the cross. Paul also states in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, that for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But for those who are saved, it is the power of God. In the 22nd and 23rd verses, he also adds, that Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. And to those whom Jesus or God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. If we see after a few chapters in, verse, in chapter 11, Paul also goes on to speak not just to the Corinthians, but to all of us. He states that for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As Jesus and his disciples were celebrating the Passover meal, which becomes Jesus' last supper, and also I'm sure the disciples were in memory with what their ancestors have taught them, the teachings of the passing of the angel of death outside their homes, but what's something that the disciples were not aware of is the foreshadowing of the passing of death to all of mankind, which is Jesus' death on the cross and resurrecting. In fact, Jesus calls it the new covenant, and we see it's also usage twice. And not just the new covenant, another term which we often see in these three chapters is in remembrance of me, which is also stated twice. It is essential that I think that we understand the torture to which Jesus' body was subjected to and the unblemished blood that was shed on the cross had given us new freedom with Jesus' assurance that we'll no longer be slaves to sin under his new covenant. Just like the Israelites were freed from the slaves in Egypt and the angel of death passing over so that they can travel to the promised land of the old covenant, we must rejoice that death has lost its sting. With Christ on the cross, we passed from death to eternal life. By participating in the Holy Communion, where by eating and drinking at the Lord's table with fellow believers, we must remember three things. 
Firstly, we must remember the body and blood of Christ. We must remember the cross in which Jesus' death took place. And we must also remember the new covenant to which he tells us that we are his. By doing this in remembrance of him, we rejoice in the new covenant that frees us from death and gives us eternal life.